Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. I'd like to share my new H. Moser and C. Endeavor Small Seconds. And let me start with a brief history of Moser. Heinrich Moser was born into a watchmaking family in 1805 in Schaffhausen, Switzerland. In 1828, he founded H. Moser and C. in St. Petersburg, Russia where he sold his and other brand watches. In 1829, he built a factory in the Lok, Switzerland, to develop and use his own movements. He is distributing his creations in his own boutiques in Russia, Persia, China, and Central America. Interestingly, within his 50-employee company, Heinrich Moser used German, Russian, and Italian watchmakers rather than Swiss and French watchmakers, which were more typically used at the time. In 1848, Heinrich returned to Schaffhausen and expanded his manufacture, but continued to sell watches in St. Petersburg. In 1918, the Russian Revolution forced Moser and C. to return to Switzerland. Fast forward to 1953, when Moser first produced wristwatches in La Loc. After the company passed through various owners, it disappeared at the end of the 1970s. But in 2005, the brand was relaunched by Roger Bausiger, a great-grandson of Heinrich Moser. In 2012, the company passed to the Malin family, where it remains as an independent Swiss watch manufacturer today, actually as part of the MELB holding group. Moser produces about 1,200 watches per year and currently employs about 55 staff. I like to refer to Moser as the other Schaffhausen brand, but unlike a certain other brand, it does not put Schaffhausen on the dial. You're looking right now at the Endeavor Small Seconds. Reference 1321-0210. Moser says that this piece was inspired by traditional pocket watches. In fact, the watch even oscillates at a more classical rate of just 18,000 beats per hour, similar to old pocket watches. A more traditional frequency like this provides supposed better accuracy, but requires closer tolerances in manufacture. Looking at the dial, a single applied Arabic number appears at 12 o'clock on this gorgeous Argenta dial. Argenta is a light silver look with a sunburst effect radiating from the center. The 12 and markers are white gold as are the leaf hour and minute hands. Take a moment to contemplate the hands. Leaf shaped but rather subtle and understated. Alternating sized applied markers start at one o'clock and proceed throughout the range except for at six o'clock, which is where the running second subdial is located. The second subdial has main markers at three, six, nine, and 12, and smaller markers in between. The second hand is also a mini leaf design also so subtle that you have to look extremely close to see it. I think it's a nice touch. Circular guilloche in the central two-thirds of the subdial adds depth and interest to the dial. The case is 18 karat white gold. It's elegant, non-ostentatious, doesn't call attention to itself, and I think most people, if they even notice the watch, will think it's a stainless steel case. I like that. If I had to choose one word to describe it, it would be understated. The diameter of the Endeavor small seconds is 38.8 millimeters, which is a sweet spot size for me. And anyway, it's more of a classical size. 
Thickness comes in at 9.3 millimeters, which is relatively thin by modern dress watch standards. Since this is a manual wind watch, the absence of a rotor saves about 1 to 3 millimeters in case height. That's a good thing for two reasons. One, as I mentioned, it minimizes the height of the watch. And secondly, in previous videos, I made no secret of my penchant for manual wind watches due to the connection I develop with those watches. Winding a watch every couple of days allows a sense of intimacy and appreciation for the watch, its design and technology. Lug to lug distance is 45 millimeters, which is relatively short, so it fits a wider variety of wrists. And this piece has an exhibition case back, which allows one to see the beautiful and intricate movement details. Many high-end watches allow a glimpse into the mechanical workings of the watch, not to mention a view of the fine finishing, beveled edges, perlage, Cote de Genève striping, etc. This is especially true with manual wound watches where an automatic winding rotor would hide some or all of the excitement. Often the movement is the highlight of the piece, although horology pieces often have a corresponding beautiful and sometimes intricate dial as well. And there's a Moser sign crown in white gold. Let's talk about the movement. The movement on this endeavor, small seconds, is a hand wound in-house HMC 321 caliber. It has a minimum three day power reserve, but I usually get closer to four days, maybe a little bit more than four days of power out of a full wind. And here is where some interesting stuff and what Moser would call technical innovations takes place. Firstly, Moser teeth. Moser mentions that for all wheels and pinions, what they call Moser teeth are used. These are epicycloidal teeth, which provides less friction and more efficient power transmission than otherwise. Also, the teeth have rounded bottoms, which make them stronger compared to square bottom teeth. Manufacturing these type of teeth require more stringent standards and processes. Another hallmark of Moser's precision engineering subsidiary, which I will mention shortly. Another technical innovation, this Moser has a modular escapement, which I believe is unique to Moser. The entire escapement, the balance wheel, hairspring, pallet fork, are our are all interchangeable so as to simplify adjustment, cleaning, and servicing per Moser. This speeds servicing time and allows the module to be serviced either locally or at Moser headquarters as needed and ostensibly without delaying the return of the watch to the owner when it's in for service. In addition, the pallet fork and escapement wheel are made of hardened solid gold with low friction surfaces. This allows the escapement in its entirety to not need lubrication. Another technical feature is the Straumann hairspring. Made of seven element corrosion free anti-magnetic fracture resistant alloy. This improves isochronism and timekeeping. As you might know, isochronism is derived from the Greek roots iso and chronos and literally means same time. Basically, it relates to the consistency of a watch timekeeping in all tested positions of wear. And finally, the Endeavor movement in this watch uses a stabilized Breguet overcoil. Invented by Louis Breguet in 1795, many high-end watches use this design to improve their timekeeping of the watch. With a fully wound watch, there is more pull on the hairspring when it opens. When the mainspring winds down, there is less pull on the hairspring, which could cause the watch to speed up. 
in the Begay spiral or overcoil, the end of the spring bends up back over the top of the spring and anchors the pivot point of the spring closer to its center, resulting in the spring always having an equal pull over a broader range of mainspring tension than just a flat spring. The Straumann hairspring is made by the in-house company Precision Engineering, as I mentioned before, and Precision Engineering actually does the entire creation of the hairspring, from melting the alloy, rolling out the wire, uh, to a 0 0.075 millimeter, which is thinner than a human hair, into a flat hairspring with accuracy of 0.1 thousandths of a millimeter. As mentioned, Moser is known for many technical innovations, and many of them have been designed and produced by their in-house company, Precision Engineering. Precision Engineering, the historical ancestor started in the 1930s when Dr. Reinhold Straumann developed and patented a revolutionary alloy for self-compensating hairsprings. His invention became the basis for all Niverox type alloys containing iron, nickel, and chrome used in watchmaking. PE, Precision Engineering, AG, was founded in 2001 by Dr. Thomas Stroman, Reinhardt's grandson. It took over the watchmaking business of Stroman SA, where it continues to have expertise in material development and manufacture. PE is one of the few companies in the world capable of designing and manufacturing ferromagnetic and paramagnetic alloys for self-compensating hairsprings. In 2012, Precision Engineering AG became an independent subsidiary of the Moser Watch Holding Group. The HMC321 runs at 18K vibrations per hour. This would seem slow to the average watch enthusiast, but a faster movement doesn't necessarily mean more accurate. However, higher frequency can help deliver a slightly more stable rate. And in fact, the most stable regulating movement, not the fastest, will enable the watch to keep more accurate time. With a slower frequency, the watch manufacturer must make the parts with closer tolerances because there are no additional beats per hour to match the rate. I think a good analogy here is that of data collection. The more data you collect, the less individual variations will impact the final result. If you were collecting data and your sample size is small, there could be more variability since any one data point, or a few, may be extreme. These individual outliers ultimately have an effect compared to the number of data points obtained. If your sample size is large in a high beat frequency movement, you're collecting many, many more data points, and any one or a few outlier data points won't influence the variability of the data because they have less of an impact. So it's the same with movement frequency. Higher quality watch brands make movement parts with closer tolerances, and the movements generally operate at lower frequencies or don't have to operate at higher, resulting in less variability and more stability. A high frequency or high beat watch requires less fine tolerances because of so many oscillations. A lower frequency rate, such as the Moser and other high-end watches, requires the better manufacturing of the piece parts and closer tolerances, as I mentioned, because variations could affect the result and be more impactful. The HMC321 has hacking seconds. It also has a power reserve indicator on the movement side. Providing the power reserve on the movement side reduces the complexity or clutter to the dial, although I personally like a reserve de marche indicator on the dial. The power reserve hand is nicely blued, and interestingly, when the watch is wound, the power reserve dial moves not the hand. The Endeavor Small Seconds has a 
strap width of 20 millimeters. It comes on a brown alligator leather strap, which is gorgeous. It includes a white gold pin buckle. And the soft and supple leather strap is made by a Moser subsidiary that's extremely comfortable. On the wrist, I hardly even know it's there. So, overall impressions. Timekeeping. We talk about accuracy and precision in timekeeping of a watch. And I think this is analogous to validity and reliability in scientific testing. Validity is, are you really measuring what you think you're measuring? And reliability is if the measurement is consistent and repeatable over time. So accuracy is like comparing timekeeping to a standard and precision is is the measurement repeatable irrespective to the accuracy. This particular Moser Endeavor is running about 11 to 13 seconds fast. I measured it when I first obtained the watch and then as I do with most watches I wore the watch 24-7 for three weeks excluding showering, dishes, doing the dishes and snow shoveling. After three weeks the accuracy on a time grapher measured plus 13 seconds per day. I learned from reliable sources that Mosers tend to run fast. Actually this accuracy result is better than some other new or like new watches. However, I expected this piece to have better accuracy given that it is considered a quote unquote high horology watch. I've also been told that the watch cannot be easily regulated, which is both surprising and disappointing. Since this and several other Moser watches have a modular escapement, to potentially improve the accuracy, the entire escapement would have to be replaced with no guarantee of an improved improvement in accuracy. So that's surprising since I have other high-end watches, all less expensive to varying degrees with much better accuracy. I have a Hobbering 2 Felix that runs almost zero seconds per day. Doesn't gain, it doesn't lose, right at zero. My Rolex Explorer is running about plus two seconds per day. I have an inexpensive Seiko Sarb 033 running at plus four seconds per day. And I have two Parmigianis. One is a Kalpa, which runs about six seconds per day, plus six seconds per day. And my Parmigiani Hebdo Madere is running in about plus four seconds per day. So what does this mean? In the big scheme of things, one would prefer to have a watch run faster than slower. Therefore, not to be late for appointments, etc. Better to be early than late. Since this small seconds has roughly a three-day power reserve, that means that every third day when I wind the watch, it's off by about half a minute. Easy to reset when winding the watch. So ultimately, perhaps not a big deal, but still disappointing. In summary, for the most part, the H. Moser watches typically have a minimalistic aesthetic, which is a trademark Moser style. As a result, in keeping with the type of design, Moser watches are characteristically understated. Even the most flamboyant Moser watches, such as the Endeavors with blue, green, or red Fume dials, are still understated and often don't even have branding on the dial. But you still know they are a Moser. And the technical innovations appeal to me. The Straumann hairspring, interchangeable modular escapement, and Moser teeth. Finally, H. Moser & C is probably one of the lesser known Swiss brands, but is truly a hidden gem that many watch enthusiasts are unfamiliar with. Overall, I like my Moser small seconds and plan to keep it. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button to be alerted of future videos. And as usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.